Hello, this is Donnie Smith, and in this video we're going to talk about vehicle design. Uh, how the vehicle is made from the automakers and some of the changes through the years. Now we're not going to get real involved in, in the vehicle design. Just a brief overview so you kind of understand the concept of it. And you know, whenever you go to, uh, you know, repairing frames, uh, it's going to become a lot more important. But for now we're just going to kind of give an overview so that you understand the basics of vehicle design. Now, if you think about it, we've came a long ways in the past hundred years. You know, if you think back when Henry Ford started producing, mass producing the Model A's and Model T's, uh, quite a bit of difference in those cars and the cars of today. Uh, those cars are basically built with ladder frames, and what that means is just basically two rails. You know, if you think of a ladder, you know, it's two rails with cross members. And the way it had it uh, for, for strength, you know, it's just by, you know, it was thick metal and it was real heavy duty, real uh, thick gauge steel to get its strength. And the problem with that is, you know, if you think of two rails and uh, whenever it would, you know, have an accident, whenever it run into something, have a wreck, you know, nothing would give. You know, that frame was real strong and stout and it hit something and, you know, the passengers would take all the impact themselves. You know, be like being bolted onto a railroad, you know, track you know a part of one and you know slamming up against a wall you can you think of how much impact your body would take um, you know like they say about falling you know it's not the fall that hurts you you know it's that sudden stop and this is the same thing you know that was uh, causing a lot of accidents or a lot of injuries and deaths due to that so the they started trying to make cars safer and at the same time, the government wanted to make cars that was, you know, better fuel efficient. So they started coming up with ways to make cars lighter. And they started engineering at the same time lighter and safer. And the way they did this is to make weaker areas in parts of the car. And this is called crush zones, collapse zones. And this was absorbed some of that energy, kind of acting like a shock absorber. And they'd also make stronger areas to help protect the, the passengers. And that would transfer the energy around the passengers to keep them safer. Now I'm going to pause just for a second, or have you pause for a second, and, and, and kind of explain why you may need to know this. Because you may be asking, why do I need to know this? You know, if you're going to be a painter as a profession, or you're just wanting to, you know, fix a few minor dents and, you know, do it yourself, you know, this may not be you know that important to you but if you're going to be an estimator or a collision repair technician you know this information is really important because you need to know how a car is designed in order to develop a repair plan if you don't really understand the concept it's going to be hard to you know uh, get it all in your mind of what happened in an accident and try to reverse that damage because you've got to you know reverse whatever happened in the accident you know the first in last out and we mentioned crush zones, you need to understand those and know where they're located because, you know, you, if you're going to section something, you never want to section in a crush zone and uh, that's something you need to know. And we'll talk about here in a minute, some, some of the newer cars even have areas that have crush zones, but you can't see them. So it becomes that more important to understand how vehicles are being made. So let's go ahead and continue. We're going to talk about crush zones a little more. And like I said, this is uh, like a shock absorber. You know, it takes part, part of the energy. You can think of it like putting a huge shock absorber in the front of the car and letting that slow the car down, down before that sudden stop. That's what cars are designed to do. And I know you hear, you know, they don't make them like they used to. You know, meaning, you know, I had a car and I had a little accident and it just totally wiped my car out. And that's true. Cars do take a lot more, or there's a lot more damage in an accident than the older cars. But people are actually coming out of these accidents, you know, with a lot less injuries. So cars are safer today even though the cars are, uh, you know, have a lot of damage when they are involved in an accident. But if you think about it, uh, you know, we want to keep passengers safe. If, if it was you or your family in that car, I'm sure you could care less about the car. You want, you know, yourself or your family members to be safe. So that's uh that that's what where car designers are putting all these you know crush zones and, and stronger metals you know around the compassionate compartment to try to uh, to design this where it does keep you safe. 
So you've got uh, the front and rear section, you know, that's designed to absorb the energy, take, take some of that impact. And then your passenger compartment, that's where you have some of those stronger steels that we're going to talk about. And it's designed to protect the passengers. Now you got vehicle sections, and this is also important to know, and it may be uh, sound very simple, but there is some confusion. You know, for example, uh, there's a right and left, and you'll need to know this whenever you're doing, you know, frame damage work or ordering parts. You know, is it from facing the car, or you know, which which one's right and which one's left? Well, the way to remember this is if you're driving down the road, you're sitting in the car, facing forward the right your right hand is always the right side and your left is always the left side so if you're ordering a right front fender that's going to be the passenger fender uh, the and of course the the passenger or the driver is going to be your left fender also have sections you have the front section which is uh, you know basically from the windshield forward you have the center section which is the passenger compartment uh, from the you know from windshield to back glass and then you have the rear section that's your trunk area that's your three sections and we're going to talk about some of the parts in each one of these sections it's also important to understand the names of the parts the nomenclature so that you know if you're ordering parts or you're repairing a part reading a repair order to kind of have an idea of what these parts you know the names of them so you've got the in the front you know of course you got the the bolt on things you have the front bumper cover grill headlamps and you've got the radiator support and the radiator support is actually part of your unibody now whenever I talk about unibody that's just a you know the the design I've, I've heard you know people say that unibodies don't have frames well they do have frame rails but what unibody means is a uh, una una means one so it just means everything including the frame rails are welded together to make one piece rather than the body over frame you know which, which the body bolts to the frame so on a unibody you know you get the radiator support which consists of several pieces and uh, you know you get the upper tie bar and uh, the lower support and, you know where the headlights bolt in all that's part of your radiator support and then you've got your frame rails you know you got uh, upper frame rails and you got lower frame rails and each one of these parts can be replaced or sectioned you know you take uh, take that part out drill the spot welds or section it you know in a certain area and like I mentioned you need to understand crush zones because you don't want to section in those areas also have the fender aprons and that's what the fender bolts onto so you're gonna have a right apron and a left apron the strut towers that's where your struts bolt into and that's uh, on the apron and of course you know your uh, bolt on parts or the bumper grill headlamps fender and hood that basically you know consists of your front part and again the front area of your car is designed to absorb and that's done with crush zones now we've got the center section and this is your a pillar or windshield pillar your b and c pillars and basically like i said you know it's from the windshield to back glass that is your passenger compartment also consists of the rocker panels that's below the doors uh, the floor pan and the roof supports and then you've got your roof panel your doors and your glass that is basically all of your your center section and this part is designed to be really strong you don't want it to absorb energy you want the passenger compartment to transfer all that energy all that damage around you around the passengers Now we have our rear section, and again we've got our rear rear frame rail, rails, the trunk floor pan, the quarter panels, the rear body panel. That's what your tail lights bolt onto, and then you've got you know your bolt-on panels like your deck lid and your tail lights and rear bumper cover and bumper reinforcement and all those that attach to the rear section. And again, the rear section, it's designed you know if you get hit from the rear to absorb some of that energy, so you don't have that real uh, so, so the passengers don't take all that that impact so the front and rear absorb energy and the passenger passenger compartment transfers energy now we're going to talk about a few of the different frames you know we kind of been talking about unibody but there's actually three basic types of frames 
and that's full frame, unibody, and space frame. So let's talk about one of each one of these a little bit. Now, full frame, that's just you know a regular frame like uh, the ladder frame we was talking about. But even those now have crush zones designed in them where they will absorb energy as well. But what a full frame is is where it's two pieces. You know, you've got the frame and then you got the body that bolts onto the frame. It's two pieces. Now, there are some unitized bodies that's one piece that bolts onto the frame. So it's like having a unitized body that is one piece that bolts to the frame. On a full frame, the suspension, the engine, transmission, everything bolts to the frame. So you can take the body off or all the body panels and all your 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 uh, mechanical parts would still be bolted onto the full frame. Now unibody, that's where all the structure is. Uh, it's one piece. So you've got, like I said, you got all the you know the frame rails, the floor pan, all that is welded into one piece. And they're usually welded together from the factory. You know different methods. The probably the most common is spot welds, and that's where a, uh, the machines go in and they squeeze the metal together, and uh, there's no filler metal a added. It just squeezes together real tr tight, heats it up, and fuses the metal together. So you'll just see round dimples where this happened at, and that's a spot weld. And then you have space frames. Now space frames a type of unibody, but the difference between a space frame and a unibody is a space frame has its full integrity in the frame itself. For example, with a unibody, you know it takes some of those uh, panels that's welded on like the quarter panels and you know the roof and all that to kind of weld together to get its full strength well space, uh, space frame you could take all the panels off of it and it still have its full integrity if you think like of like a funny car you know race car and you know the the, the bodies on there are just for looks you know maybe some aerodynamics but it's mainly just for looks you could take the body off and that car would still be just as strong you know the tube frame well, this is a that's kind of what a space frame is. So a space frame is a type of unibody, but a unibody is not a space frame. So, how are these cars held together? Now we mentioned a spot weld, and that's the majority of the welds. But there's also some laser welds, which are you know done by machine, um, mechanical. You know there's some mechanical ways cars are held together, and this can be with you know nuts, bolts, rivets. Uh, and also there's a lot of adhesives being used. There's some benefits to adhesives, adhesives because uh, it helps seal out the moisture and that's something else with these unibodies is you got to uh, consider rust. So if all everything ha you know depends on its uh, these panels for its full integrity you know rust is more than an eyesore. You know you see a rust spot on, on unibody parts and you know it actually is weakening the, the structure of that car. So these adhesive, adhesives help seal out moisture to prevent uh, these vehicles from rusting. Now let's talk about some of the material materials used because this is where there's a lot of changes in the steels. Uh, the, the earlier car, cars was all mild steel and to get that strength you basically had to make you know use thicker steel but they started using lighter steel and putting, di putting different alloys in it and making high strength steel. So what, <coughs> excuse me, what this would be, this would be a thinner metal but it still ha have the hardness of a thicker steel. And then they also start developing ultra high strength steels and borons. And this is even harder steel. And this is done with alloys and by heating it up, you know, different type of heat treatments and making this metal really hard. And of course this is your real strong steel and they're going to use this around the passenger compartment they're going to use it you know inside of the doors you know in, in, in the intrusion beam and areas like that to keep the passengers safe and also you know we still the government is still wanting better fuel mileage so I think you're going to see a lot more plastics I mean there's already a lot of plastics and SMC or SMC which is sheet molded compound uh, basically that is just a, a it's a fiberglass, fiber reinforced plastic, um, but you're going to see a lot more of those because they are a lot more lightweight than some of the metals. 
and uh, carbon fiber. And there's some of that out there already, but I think we're going to see a lot more of that because it's super strong and really lightweight. So if the car makers are going to have to make cars that get a certain mile per, uh, miles per gallon, they're going to do whatever it takes so that they can sell these cars. And it really doesn't matter the cost of the materials because they have to make them to get the certain miles per gallon. So it's just going to, you know, if there's higher materials in it, you know, the car, of course, is going to be more expensive to purchase. So I think we're going to see a lot more lightweight materials in the plastics and the, and the composites as we as move forward. Now, when we start talking about these uh, repairs to... Uh, like ultra high strength steel and boron, there's a lot of considerations that didn't used to be there. It's very heat sensitive. You can't hardly heat it. A lot of manufacturers recommend no heat at all uh, because if you heat it up, you know it loses those properties from the heat treatment, and basically you're getting something that was supposed to be boron or ultra high strength steel, and you're you're changing the properties of it, and it's not that, you know, it's not the the have the strength that it's supposed to so it's involved in an accident you know there's going to be unnecessary injuries you can't really repair it it's you can't really repair these those type of steels because it's so hard if you go to try to straighten it it's probably going to crack so most of your ultra high strength steels and boron are replace only so like in your the intrusion beams in the car and and you know anywhere that's indicated that it's ultra high strength steel or boron uh, not going to be much repairing it's going to be replace Another thing that vehicle makers started doing uh, to, to be able to get the cars str stronger, the metal stronger with lighter weight or with lighter steel, <coughs> is to put more body lines and curves in them. You know, if you take a, a regular, even mild steel and you bend it like a body line, you know, it strengthen, strengthens that steel because it work hardens that steel in that area. Now this is another consideration because if there's a some damage in a body line, you know it's going to be harder to repair there than it is just a flat area. So whenever you're looking at a car and you're estimating it or you're thinking about a repair plan whenever you go to repairing it, you know that's going to make a difference where the damage is at. Basically, you know there's some common types of uh, frame damage. You've got sag and this is very easy to to indicate because sag is usually in the cowl area that's uh right at the front door and the rear of the the front of the front door and the rear of the front fender uh easy way to see that is by your gap there if it's real real narrow at the top and wider at the bottom that's a good indication that it has sag and there's side sway and that's where you know the front end doesn't have to be the front end, front end or back ends pushed over one way or the other. And a good indication of this is the gaps wide on one side of the gaps and narrow on the other. That's a good indication of side sway. And then you have mash, and you know this may be a little bit harder to determine just by gaps, but that's basically where the frame has been shortened, you know, from what the specification should be. And then you have diamond. Now this can happen to unibody, but it's more uh, normal, more common in body over frame. This is where it actually uh, gets your frame and it kind of gets it out of square, you know, from pushing it back so far. So, And there's one more, which is not very common on unibody, or if it is, it's probably going to be totaled, which is twist. That's where, you know, it just basically twists. So... When we do get some frame damage, you know, we got to think about how to measure this damage. First off, I'm going to talk about control points. You know, what are control points, reference points? Well, control points is, uh, you know, where the factory put these pieces together. You know, the, the robots have to grab these pieces in certain areas and they hang uh, for, you know, in jigs, you know, put, putting it together. Those points where these machines grab are designed into there just so that it you know for you know the jigs that it's fitting into so that's control points now reference points is what you're going to use when you go to measuring the damage now it could be a control point that was from the factory it could be like a hole but it could also be a bolt or just 
any anything that they reference as a point. So whenever you look at the specifications, it's going to give you references. You know, from this bolt to that bolt should be, you know, 33 millimeters or whatever. You know, so that's what a reference point is. And then there's tolerance. And what that's talking about is how, how close can you get that car back to within tolerance. So if it says, you know, 133 millimeters, uh, kind of the general rule of thumb for a long time was three. If you can get it within three millimeters, so if you just, if it was 133 and you got it to 130, that would be good. But the cars being designed today have less and less tolerance, and there are some that you know they they really don't give any tolerance. And if it's off just a little bit, you know the body panels are not going to line up, and you're going to see uneven gaps. And the body over frame in the older vehicles. You could adjust the panels to, you know, where it could uh, make the, you know, you, you could make the gaps line up. But if you're not dead on with, with these cars, with these newer unibodies, you know, it's going to be very noticeable. Now let's talk about also, you know, we talked about, you know, the first in, last out. You want to reverse what happened. So you can, there's some predictable things, but they're, you know, it's not an absolute but a lot of times if you're driving and you see you're going to hit you know head on with another car or whatever it is uh, there's some common things that a driver's probably going to do and the first thing they're probably going to do is hit the brakes well, when they hit the brakes the front of the car goes down and the rear of the car goes up you got to think of the inertia that's going on so when it hits it's uh, got that momentum of the front going down and the back going up and that's why you're going to get the sag and that's the first uh, type of damage that usually happens is that sag. The second thing that you're probably going to do, just out of you know natural reaction, is you're going to swerve one way or the other. So you're probably not going to hit them straight on. So you're probably going to swerve the wheel just a little bit. And by doing this, it's going to cause the you know the front end to go one way or the other, and that's going to give you side sway. And as the con uh, as the collision continues, the momentum continues to to uh, collapse. You know, it's going to keep cause it the you know the unibody you know, to mash, which is going to shorten the frame, you know, wherever the point of impact is. And uh, then, of course, you know, if it if it's hit hard enough, you could get into diamond and twist. But now, this is some things to look for. Again, I said there's no absolutes. I mean, you might be driving down the road on the texting someone or reaching on the floorboard and trying to get something and run into the back of someone and never hit your brakes or turn the wheel. So, but, you know, a lot of times these are things that you can look for and consider, you know, whenever you go to looking at a car and trying to develop a repair plan. And there's also different zones to look for. Um, you know, the first thing that, that you have is the direct damage. And this is very easy to see. I mean, it's the point of impact. You know, that's the, the, the main thing that was hit. So, the direct damage is, is the point of impact. But then you have indirect damage, and this is caused by the direct damage. And it's caused, uh, you know, it can be a number of things. It can be buckling, uh, you know, done in other panels from, from the damage, from the force. Uh, it could be busted pop, uh, spot welds that you can find in additional panels. Uh, seam sealer that is cracked. I mean, it's not necessarily real easy to see. Indirect damage or secondary damage you know you got to really look for that sometimes and it can be uh, travel throughout the car because remember uh, the front and rear you know absorb and it transfers around the passenger passenger compartment so the damage can really travel pretty far on on unibody cars and then you got to think of the mechanical components and you know just like the uh, Newton's law you know the uh, yeah the what's in motion tends to stay in motion well if you think of a motor bolted onto a frame if it wasn't bolted uh, bolted in and you hit something what's going to happen well that frame's going to want or that motor is going to want to continue to go on forward so you may have to look at some of the damage going the opposite direction so where the motors bolted on you may have to look for some of the damage going forward um, also the same thing with the passenger compartment you know the the people inside the car you know same thing they're gonna have damage going forward even if it if they hit something going forward and most of the damage is going you know back 
still, you know, they're going to go forward. They're going to hit, the, you know, their knees on, on the interior parts of the car, the seat belts. You know, they're going to be uh, maybe some damage in there to look for. You know, if there was things inside the car that went flying around. Uh, you know, that's things that you need to look for as well. And then the, the last zone is, you know, like your your trim and exterior components. You know, there could be damage, like if you have some big mirrors on, you hit something real hard. You know, that just the, the inertia of that, just the, the, the force of it still wanting to go forward could cause some damage as well. Uh, if you had a toolbox in the trunk, you know, that could cause some damage inside of there. So there's really more things to look for than the point of impact, that number one. If you just look at the direct damage, you're going to be missing quite a bit. So, uh, again, I, you know, I don't want to get too in-depth at this point, but just some of the things to kind of think about, you know, as you, as you start, you know, thinking about, you know, developing a repair plan. So, some repair considerations, uh, you know, if you're going to do a repair or replace it, you know, there's some different things to think about that as well. Uh, first, can it be repaired? I mean, there are some uh, parts, it just can't be repaired. It doesn't really matter if, if it was given to you for free. If it can't be repaired, you're going to have to replace the part. There's also the bend versus kink rule. You know, if it's bent a little bit, you can repair it. And if it's kinked, you know, if it's got a real sharp bend and may even have cracks and tears in it, you know, that's when you probably want to, you, know, you want to want to go ahead and replace. But still that rule falls under the first one. You know, if, uh, if it can't be replaced, of course it's going to have to be repaired. Now the cost, you know, is it going to be cheaper to repair it or replace it? For example, you know, is that part, if it's a hundred dollar part, and it's going to take you four hours to replace it, or to repair it, which would be the better option? Well, of course, replace it's going to be better, even though it could be repaired. Because if you're at $50 an hour, that's $200 to repair it, versus, you know, $100 for the part. So that, you know, the cost is some things that you kind of want to look at as well. And also recommendations. You know, there are some parts that don't, that, you know, the manufacturer wants you to replace only, like we talked about you know, uh, the ultra high strength steel and the boron, uh, you know, those are, you cannot repair those. Those will replace only. Uh, some, uh, some of your parts, the manufacturer only wants you to do a full replacement. And that means, you know, replacing everything at the factory seams. But a lot of times you can get by with sectioning. For example, a quarter panel, rather than going all the way up to the factory seam, you know, you can section it in a smaller area, like up by your back glass, and section it, you know, without getting into the roof panel. So those are some different repair considerations. And again, this is, you know, until we get deeper into it, this is kind of an overview, just to kind of some things to think about and consider. So in this uh, video, we talked about, you know, absorbing energy, and how cars are designed to do that. It creates a lot of damage to the car, but keeps the passengers safe because the front and rear, you know, it absorbs the energy and transfers around the passenger compartment, keeping the, the uh, passenger safe. You have the different sides, the right and left, and the, you know, the sections, the front sec section, the center, and rear. And the nomenclature, you know, some of the parts of the car, the names of the parts, it's important to know that. You know, the types of the frames, you know, we have a body over frame, and that's where the body is bolted to the frame, two pieces. And then we've got the unibody, which is all welded together one piece. And then we've got the space frame, which is also welded together as one piece. But it has its full strength and integrity, you know, without any of the panels helping, helping strengthen it. We've got the different types of metals. You know, mild steel is just regular steel. Very easy to repair. We've got high strength steel, which is more heat sensitive. But, it, you know, it is repairable. And then we have a ultra high strength steel and boron which is replace only and those uh, ultra high strength steels and borons are used mostly around the compassion passenger compartment you know to keep the passengers safe transfer that damage or that energy around the passengers and then we have attachment methods you know basically we have weld you know we've got spot welds and laser welds that are done at the factory different types of welds we have mechanical you know uh, nuts bolts rivets we have a lot of adhesives that's being used today 
uh, repair cautions you know like borons in the in the ultra high strength steel you can't heat it and you can't repair it um, and the types of uh, frame damage you know we have the sag and the side sway and the mash and the diamond and twist and usually if you have the diamond and twist in your unibody it's a it, good chance it's going to be a total and we have the damage sequence you know usually a lot of things that happen but not necessarily but chances are more times than not you know you're going to have the you know hit the brake and cause sag and turn the steering wheel a little bit and cause side sway and then mash and that's some things to look for whenever you go to uh, repairing the damage so that you can reverse that and then we talked about the, you know some of the uh, measurements and repair considerations you know the control points that the factory uses to put the car together and the reference points that we use to uh, reference you know areas to to uh, measure from you know and that can be control points nuts bolts you know anything that they specify as a a uh, reference points and the repair considerations you know can it be repaired is it uh, kink you know the kink versus bend rule uh, is it cost effective you know those are some of the repair considerations and again this is just a real quick uh, overview of vehicle construction and you know we'll get more into depth in each one of those as we talk about more about the, the you know especially in frame damage uh, this is where this really is crucial to understand but not to confuse you just to kind of go over that real quick so you have a kind of a you know uh, uh, the basics the concept of vehicle design and that wraps this up and uh, thanks for watching talk to you soon